So today we're going to be going over the problems that you had to solve last night for homework. I'm going to go over uh, this in three different sections. So numbers 1 through 4 will be in one video, numbers 5 through 8 will be in one video, and then numbers 9 through 12 will be in another video. That way you can see any of the five problems that you solved last night for homework. You don't have to watch all the videos. So for number 1, I have 164 times 39. Since there are three place values in this number, that means I need a box that has big, is big enough to have three place values going along up top. So I'm going to draw a longer rectangle for this problem. So I have 100, because that's what the 1 really represents in the hundreds place, 60, because the 6 is in the tens place, and 4. I'm going to break it apart over here. I have 39. The 3 is in the tens place, so it's worth 30. And the 9 goes here. Still multiplying the same numbers, just broken apart in place value. I start with 100 times 30. I know that a, or 0 is a powerful number, so if I do 3 times 1, that's 3, and all I have to do is add my zeros from my factors. I have 1, 2, 3 zeros. I'm going to add 1, 2, 3 zeros to my product. 60 times 30, 6 times 3 is 18, and I have one two zeros, so I'm going to add two zeros to my product. I have 30 times 4, 4 times 3 is 12, add my one zero there. And then here I have 100 times 9. 9 times 1 is 9, and my two zeros for my factors, right there. 60 times 9 goes here. 9 times 6 is 54. Add one more zero, I have a zero there. And then 4 times 9. 4 times 9 is, is 36, so I'm going to put that there. Now these are call, all called partial products, so I need to add all those together. 3,000 plus 1,800 equals 4,800, and I can check those boxes off, plus 120 check that box off, plus 900 check that box off, plus 540 Check that box off, plus 36. And you can use graph paper if you need to help you keep this part aligned. Or use graph paper if you need to help keep the boxes separated if this method works for you or if that's the tool you would like to use. So the final answer should have been 6,396. Okay, let's look at number two. Number two is 459 times 15. That's the way you would write it for standard algorithm. Three digits up top, so I'm going to make a box big enough to have three digits going along top. 459. Over here, I'm going to separate it into two sections because I only have two digits here or two place values to cover. So that 1 represents 10 and the 5 represents 5. Here I have 400 times 10. That equals 4,000. 4 times 1 is 4 and 1, 2, 3 zeros. 50 times 10 equals 500. 5 times 1 is 5 and my two zeros for my factors. 10 times 9 equals 90. 400 times 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Now I have to be careful. I still have two more zeros to add. So I add one, two more zeros. This answer already had a zero in it, but I can't forget about my two zeros and my factors. Okay. 50 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Add my zero, 250. And then 5 times 9 is 45. Now again, these are all my partial products, so I have to add those together. 4,000 plus 500 equals 4,500 plus 90 
equals 4,590. And I can check off my first three boxes because I've added all those. Now I need to add 2,000. Check that off. Add 250. Check that off and then add 45. 6,885 is what you should have gotten as your answer for number two. Okay. I'm going to look at number three. Number three was 224 times 92. Draw my box out. Three sections because I have a number with, a, with three digits in the first at, at the top, or that's my largest number, it has three place values. So 224, break it down place value by place value. On the side is 92. 200 times 90. 9 times 2 is 18 with three zeros. 20 times 90. 9 times 2 is 18, and only two zeros this time. 90 times 4. 4 times 9 is 36 with one zero there. 200 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and I have two zeros to add in. 20 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and I have one zero to add in. And then 4 times 2 is 8. Okay. So I'm going to do... 18,000 plus 1,800 or 1,800 and I get 19,800. I'm going to add 360 to that. Okay. There's that math right there. Then I'm going to add 400 to that. Check that box off. Add 40 to this. Check that box off and then finally add 8. So I get 20,608 as my final answer for number 3. Okay. And then finally on this video we're going to solve number 4. We have 862 times 79. So again, three boxes up top. I have 860, then I have two. Across the side, I have 70, and I have nine. 800 times 70. Eight times seven is 56, and then I need three zeros. 60 times 70, 6 times 7 is 42, and I need two zeros. There's two zeros in my factors. 70 times 2, 2 times 7 is 14, and one zero there. 800 times 9, 8 times 9 so I'm going to think, first of all, this one's um, a little bit of a higher fact. You can actually use your nines trick if you want to, where you hold out your ten fingers and you put down, I don't know if I can get all of mine up under the camera, but you start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You put down your eighth finger. These count as your tens, so I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and these are your ones, one, two. So eight times nine is 72. That's always a great trick if ever you're confused by the bigger factors that you have to multiply by nine. So 72 and I add two more zeros. Then here I have 60 times nine. Again, I could use that nines trick. Nine times six, if I put up my fingers and counted to my sixth finger, put down my seventh one, I have 10, 20, 30, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So 9 times 6 is 54, and I add one more zero. And then 9 times 2. Okay, 
is 18. So I have to add all my partial products up. Five or 56,000 plus 4,200 equals 60,200 plus 140 plus 7,200 plus 540 plus 18. So you should have gotten 68,098 as the answer to number four. And that concludes our first video.